This is Dr. Don Boynowski for Blue Mountain Radio, KQBM 90.7. Today I'm going to be speaking with Dr. John Searle, Professor of Philosophy at UC Berkeley, where he began his career at the age of 26. He's the recipient of numerous awards and prizes in the field of cognitive science. Dr. Searle has published 18 books and countless articles on the structure of language, mind, and social ontology, and he's widely regarded and recognized as one of the world's great philosophers of mind and language. Welcome to the program, Dr. Searle. Um, are there any um, interesting books that you're reading right now that you'd want to share with us? Yeah, sure. I there's the the, the uh, great South African novelist Kotsaya. I don't know quite how to pronounce his name, but that would be the the German pronunciation. It's a Dutch name. Kotsaya. He got the Nobel Prize. He's just published a fascinating book called uh, The Childhood of Jesus. It's not in fact about Christ, but uh, it's a kind of metaphor, and that is a fascinating novel. It's one of the most interesting novels I've read recently. And then a friend of mine, uh, Byron. Uh, Caldas has just published uh, what must sound pretty boring, the Encyclopedia of Philosophy and the Social Sciences. It's one of those books where you open it at random and read, and it's absolutely fascinating. So those are two books that I'm either just finished reading or I'm currently reading, and I think I can recommend them both strongly. Excellent. Thank you for sharing those. Um, are there any other thoughts that you might want to share with our listeners just in terms of, I was thinking, if you had a class that you could teach the world, you know, one class, you could be as long as you wanted, you know, what would you focus on, on teaching us? Well, my last thought, I, I, not about this class, but it's about public radio. I think it's, uh, public radio institutions in the United States and everybody listening to this should get busy and support it more because uh, uh, it's a fragile institution. Now, I wouldn't try to teach one class to the whole world. I think that um, uh, first I uh, enormously, people differ enormously in what they're interested in and what they can learn. Uh, but the, the courses that I teach in Berkeley are important for the sorts of students that we have. And they are essentially, you have to understand how the mind works, you have to understand how society works, and you have to understand how language works. Those are three interrelated courses that I teach, and I think they're essential to understanding ourselves and our lives, and I think they form the, the center of philosophy. Those are points well taken and maybe something that should be addressed even earlier on in our education just to, to whet our appetites for when we go to college. That, that should be a part of our curriculum and knowledge as a, as a species. Yes, I agree. Um, so I want to ask you just one a couple other questions about the the early years what was it like to be a 26 year old professor at berkeley heading into the 1960s well i never really had time to think about age i was a 23 year old in oxford before i went to berkeley and most of my friends in oxford thought i was absolutely crazy to to california they thought i wouldn't be able to speak to anybody over here uh I never gave it a thought, really. I was a 23-year-old down in Oxford, and I, I never really paid any attention to things like that. Um, I, I didn't have time to think, of, well, how old am I? Or, you know, I, I just wasn't, it didn't occur to me. It, it was such an interesting time. Um, were there any highlights that stick out for you when you think back to those periods? Well, yeah. Uh, I was shocked to discover that the university administration was curbing free speech, including my free speech. So when a bunch of students came to me and said, look, they're restricting our free speech, they found in me a sympathetic audience and a result of the free speech movement. I don't want to take credit for that, but certainly I was active in it. Kind of an important point, even though intellectually it wasn't very uh, in, important. I mean, it, it had very little intellectual content. Uh, intellectually, I would say the most important thing that happened to me was the development of my theory of speech acts, uh, partly inspired by my Oxford teachers, especially uh, Austin and Strawson. Uh, and that really led to all my other books. Almost all of my books really grew out of the book, well, the first book I published. Did you have any inkling when you were a child that you were going to be cut out for this kind of profession that you got yourself into? Was there anything in your childhood that you could think of that stands out, or did it just happen later on in life? Well, I was always interested in philosophical questions. It wasn't until I got to university that I discovered 
you know, you can actually make a living at this. You can actually have it as a career. It never occurred to me when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I thought I'd be like my father. He was an electrical engineer. I thought, well, maybe I'm going to engineering or business or law, something like that. I often thought of a career in the law. But it turns out uh, in, in intellectual life, I, the amazing thing is you can do it with do anyway, and they'll pay you. You can make a career out of doing something you do, even if they didn't pay you. That sounds like a that sounds like a good idea. Um, is. is there is there anything else you'd like to add or uh, talk to our listeners about? No, my only to add, I want to emphasize, is support public radio. But other than that, I think we can do everything. Well, uh, Dr. John Searle, thank you very much for speaking with me this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Good luck. All right. Bye. Bye.